Hi folks, it's Joe here. Today I'm going to talk to you guys quickly about microscopic colitis and diet because I had a few people in the in our um, free group asking about this one and, and it was more geared towards um, how can I stop flare-ups happening. Let me just, I'm just going to try and find the actual um, comment by Tammy it was. And it was the second part of the question. I'll show you in fact. Post it, I'll post it myself. Yeah. So the question was from Tammy, not from me actually. How do you use diet to manage microscopic colitis? So basically to keep flare ups from happening and to help um, form type four on the Bristol stool chart more often. So I will, you know, I can kind of answer those both at the same time. Um, if you do watch me live, make sure you say hi. Um, let me know, say hi in the comments. Let me know where you're tuning in from. And just quickly before I start, for those who don't know, my name uh, is Joe. I'm a dietitian. I you know, um, specialize in gut health. We've helped over a thousand clients now online um, with their health goals. Almost, almost always um, gut specific digestive disorder, something like that. Um, just so you have some context about who I am. So this question is actually an easy one for me to to look at because I have a really in depth article that we did. I think back in 2018, it was updated um, very recently, and I'm going to share that with you guys now uh, and show you. So one sec, and we'll go through. Now, obviously, this only hopefully you guys can can see this. Um, so this is, of course, only relevant to a certain number of people, although what I'm saying here applies to a lot of digestive issues, but I, I find microscopic colitis um, quite interesting because it's not quite the same as the other bowel disease like ulcerative colitis or Crohn's disease, but it does share the similarity in that it is inflammation. Um, and we're looking at, well, how can we reduce that inflammation and, and stop triggers from happening? Because as um, Tammy had commented, uh, sorry, flare-ups, we, we want those to stop um, being triggered. So if you, and I'll post a link to this actually um, in the comments after. But basically, yeah, you want to have a look at this. Long story short, you have um, the the so-called treatment. Like this is an area that is is still kind of new in medicine and, and how to treat it. We have, um, of course, steroids for for treating flare-ups that they do with um, the usual bowel diseases as well. Not the usual, the more common bowel diseases as well. Um, that's obviously uh, a band-aid solution, right? You you can't be taking that um, forever, and you don't want to be taking that very often, in fact. So we want to try to do it in a more natural way, I suppose, but, you know, managing it more through diet and lifestyle so that the flare-ups don't happen. Can you can you cure the disease? Um, I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, no, one, no one can say they can. Uh, we can definitely manage symptoms so it doesn't affect your life or, or, it's, or it's, you know, occurs very seldom. And so that's going to be our realistic goal, right? So I talk about natural treatments. You know, there's there's some some very early supplement um, evidence. Again, a band aid solution. Same with probiotics. If you start to think about taking a probiotic, well, maybe if I change the uh, the gut microbiome or the, the balance of bacteria in my gut, um, that's going to help. Again, I think you're just you're really focusing on the one percent there, and and you're not going to get very far. Uh, I liken it to like, you know, say there's something wrong with your, your car's engine and you take it to the mechanic, like, hey, you know, my car's broken, can you can you fix the engine? And then the mechanic, like, you know, he cleans the mirror and he polishes your tires and gives it back. And it's like, but you didn't actually fix the problem. Yeah, the, it, maybe it's it's slightly better, the car, but it's it's still broken. And this is what happens when people are using supplements all the time, particularly probiotics, without any specific direction. Uh, you're really just 
you know, changing the tires, you're not actually uh, helping yourself. What can I eat without being fearful of, of uh, having these flare ups? What's good for me and what's not? What can I eat so that my, my bowel movements are, are normal? Type four, um, type four on the Bristol stool chart. So that's how we explain uh, how we grade bowel uh, movements. And type four is like normal, what you want. And one and seven are the extremes either way that you don't want. So I'll caveat and say that um, probiotics, they're, they are well studied and they are useful with certain bowel diseases uh, like Crohn's and ulcerative colitis and potentially microscopic as well, like we have here. But these are very small studies, so they're not big enough to eliminate chance, basically. That's why we say small studies. They're good, but they're not that useful because this there can still be chance. Only when you've got big, big numbers can we remove chance from being a factor. So if something helps someone, if it's a sm you know if it's five ten people, um, it could have just been coincidence that they improved or didn't, right? So that's that's why it's I kind of like am sitting on the fence about that. Anyway, the good thing is we don't. That can be part of your strategy. Um, what we're looking at really is is uh, is diet changes, right? Um, what have I got here? Interesting. Diet change has not been shown to um, increase risk, but this is kind of it's, – it's hard to say because they look at people um, with it and then are, are you going to have a flare-up and people without it and their risk of getting it the first time. So it's it's very early area, and the reality is if, you, if you're Googling and trying to find things, um, it's going to be tough because there isn't a lot of published well-known evidence. The people who have – the experience training it of the clinicians, um, such as you know myself or, or my team, where we work with people. So at least we we do have some data from that. It's not perfect and, and anecdotal data. It's 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 not desirable, right? I would love to have a big you know study of ten thousand people that I could refer you to, but it's it's not going to exist. Um, and so we just get feedback from our clients about what what works and what doesn't. So to answer the question here, how to use diet to manage it? How to use diet? So a low fat, low fiber diet is kind of going to be recommended in the beginning and certainly during a, a flare up, right? And that's the case for a lot of different um, digestive flare ups, things that won't irritate and, and trigger. Now, that's, that is a, a low fiber diet is not a long term solution. It's not a good play for your, your gut health. Your gut bacteria, um, they rely on the fiber to, to eat, basically. That's what fermentation is. Um, that's why like, it, it needs the, the carbohydrates in that fiber to, to like grow. And so the good bacteria need it. So low fiber is not a long-term play, right? Um, then there's some associations that we noted when we you know, researched this topic. Um, it's a lot more common in people with celiac disease. So be curious, anyone who watches this, if you have it, do you have celiac disease or does someone in your family have celiac disease, your immediate family? Does someone in your immediate family have an autoimmune issue? Parents, siblings. Um, this is an important thing for us to know uh, when we're working with a client. But given that, it, let's assume you do, then... Um, and it is the case with, with some other autoimmune issues, but uh, removing gluten from the diet may help. Now, is it the protein gluten? Maybe. It may also be um, fructans, which are a type of FODMAP. And you've probably heard of low FODMAP diet, right? So that's something that, um, that's why removing gluten might help. It's not actually gluten. You, you end up removing wheat, right? And uh, when you remove wheat, you're also removing a lot of these fructans which is a type of FODMAP, these wheat fructans. And that's actually what's beneficial. It's not the gluten itself. But that's something you you can ex you can figure out if you've got a little bit of strategy. Like, so if we're working with, with someone, we're very methodical in the process. So we can actually determine like, hey, is it is it gluten or is it wheat fructans? Or is it both or is it neither? Um, that's really important to differentiate because the, the types of foods you can eat long-term um, will, will differ. So 
and also helps us to sort of work on, hey, what do we need to build your tolerance up for? So if it is for chains or FODMAPs, you know, just because you're sensitive now doesn't mean you'll be sensitive down the track. It doesn't mean you can't build your tolerance level. Okay, think of it like with food intolerance, think of it like, um, uh, I don't know, spicy food, for example. Uh, if you if you never eat it, it's like you're really sensitive. But the reason is, the reason a lot of people can eat spicy food is just because they eat it all the time and they've been exposed from a young age and they're always increasing the dose and uh, they have no problem with it now. And so that's the same for a lot of the format compounds, for example. So if you're strategic about it, you can actually increase your exposure and build your tolerance and then you're less likely to, to uh, experience flare-ups if that was triggering one of your flare-ups. Um, we've put here no research specifically looked at um, microscopic colitis and diet patterns. Um, but I mean, obviously a low format diet is, is worth trying, um, for you because it kind of ticks those boxes where it is, it is low in, in fiber, certain fibers, but overall it is, it's not a high fiber diet unless you supplement. Um, yeah, it's pretty much gluten free, lactose free. Um, for sure. There's a lot of evidence now, more and more evidence since I wrote this, I'd probably reword that a lot of emerging evidence. It helps with the other bowel diseases. So, uh, I have no doubt I'm, I'm working with clients, um, particularly with collagenous colitis, which is a type of microscopic colitis, that this uh, a low format diet, but tweaked for you, uh, really works because we, we want to fiddle with the, the fiber intake um, as well. So, so yeah, I, um, I'll, I'll link to this article below. If anyone has any questions, like um, please let me know. The other thing is, Let's see here. Yeah, I think so. Let's circle back to the, the second part of the question then. So if I come back on the screen. So basically, yeah, how do you use diet to manage microscopic colitis? Um, just be very, very methodical with your approach. So if you're gonna if you're gonna use diet to manage it, then you need to be intentional about how you're doing it. So what pattern are you following and why? And how are you going to measure the the progress and the changes? When you when you do that, and when you get intentional, and you put your symptoms, this is what I had, these are my symptoms, and when you do it like that, it's then it becomes a process and it becomes more real, and you become more invested and likely to continue on and do it, and you're actually able to interpret the results. That's what's tricky with food intolerance. You need to be intentional about how you approach it, otherwise, it all just fades into like, oh, I ate this yesterday. Like, did it help? Oh, then I had this. And, and now I'm confused because of this happened. And, you know, I went off track for a day. Now I have to start again. So you don't, you want to avoid that. So you want to just be very methodical in, in your process there. Um, I would definitely be looking at, depends on how severe your symptoms are, depends on your history of autoimmune issues or family a history of autoimmune issues or, or um, like celiac disease, for example. <clears throat> that would determine how uh, strict uh, I would be. Uh, remember, low FODMAP is like temporary. It's, you know, it, it doesn't have to be so many weeks where you're eliminating things before you are reintroducing them. Um, I, I would start with that. Then there's like proteins as well, like gluten and some other things that we might think about. Some people react to food chemicals, which is, again, another different thing and and they're the minority so you don't i wouldn't start with that but those are kind of things that we can only say when we start working with someone it's not really possible to tell you beforehand there's no tests you can do and your doctors aren't going to be able to to help you either as you probably are aware and that if you're watching me you've you've probably um done all you can with the doctors that they can help with the medical things but now you know now now we're looking at something that's not really medical anymore unless it flares up. So we want to, get, to stop it from flaring up. There's, there's a, then there's aspects that aren't diet, right? So your stress and anxiety, absolutely a trigger. I talk about that all the time on this page. If you scroll down, like I have loads of videos about anxiety and stress, how they influence your gut through the gut brain axis. Um, and part of our program when we work with clients is we're, we also uh, help them um, with that aspect. If you feel like when I'm stressed or anxious, my symptoms are worse, which is, which is everyone. Um, for me in, in IBS, that's absolutely the case. Um, that's a big piece of the puzzle. You can't ignore that either. Uh, I wish it was an easy, simple, oh, just pop this pill and, and you're good. But uh, it doesn't 
it doesn't work like that. You can get it in remission. It can be done. It doesn't have to take a long time. You just have to be intentional and you need to follow a process. And it's so complex that you do need someone to um, to kind of help help you do it, hold your hand through it. Um, you know, it's kind of like I can go and build my own house. All the things, all the resources, the tools I need are there. I can go to like, you know, Home Depot or Bunnings or whatever and buy everything and learn to build my own house. Um, or I could do it a million times faster and hire someone to, to help me do it and do it for me. Um, that's the reality of something like this. Uh, so I hope that helps. And then with the, the type four, so, so you, okay. So what happens is with, uh, with, if it's extreme diarrhea, it's like type six or seven on a Bristol stool chart. I won't bring up a picture of the Bristol stool chart. You guys can Google that. Then you've got, um, so why is that happening? What does your fiber intake look like? What type of fiber are you having? What's your average fiber intake for the week? Um, and then are you eating something that's triggering symptoms? So then, you, you know, uh, your, your digestive system is rushing everything through. So then stool doesn't form properly and it comes out type six, type seven. Um, those are the, those are all the questions I have. Like there's so much context involved. Um, but basically you want to, assuming you're not having uh, compounds that trigger your, your symptoms, or upset your upset your gut basically then we want to play with your fiber levels so uh, yeah I, i'll start with that and then we do that typically through um it depends if you're in low fodmap we would do it with a supplement um if not though we, of course we want to try and do it with food first uh and then the, we look at the type of fiber as well uh mix and match you know we very very much like try this all right we speak during the week and we speak next week. Okay, what happened? Okay, cool. Okay, then let's do let's do this. Okay, great, that worked. Let's build upon it. And it's very much back and forth. Uh, that's just what it takes, you know. It can be like 16 weeks of just like back and forth with us and we can have you on the path where you know exactly what you can and can't have and the quantities um, and you've got the skills and confidence to go forward yourself, um, eat, freely enjoy yourself and not be worried about um, flare-ups so anyway i hope that was useful um if you want help with your uh, colitis then uh, i'll post a, a link in the comments where you can tap and um send me a message and we can have a conversation and go from there um i think that's probably the fastest way to do it and see if it's a fit and, and we can explain everything there uh and uh yeah, I'll make sure. Let me just quickly check the comments here. But um, yeah, and then there's other diet approaches as well. I don't want to confuse any more. Like you might have read about AIP, SCD, all these types of things. No, I would uh, I would start with. I'm trying to think of the biggest bang for your buck. Like where, what what has the highest percentage to work for you? so that you can recover as fast as possible and you don't have to waste your time and energy worrying about this part of your life, right? Then it's, uh, I would start with the processes that I've, I've mentioned there. Um, cool. All right. Well, thank you everyone for, uh, for watching. If you have any questions, let me know. If you found it useful, please give a thumbs up. It helps bump the video up the feed. I will put the comments, the links in the comments now before I forget. Ciao.